Thank you very much. So we just heard, you know, what is quantum? So we saw that people, some people did not know what is quantum. Some thought it is very mysterious. Some thought it's magical. And over seven minutes, mind you, I'm supposed to tell you uh, all, you know, everything about quantum and leave you with the impression that there are lots and lots of possibilities. So uh, this is me. I'm receiving this uh, Canada Excellence Research Chair you know, this award in November 2023, it's supposed to come with a lot of resources, I'm told, yes? <laughs> this, this is my daughter, okay? Very sportingly, you know. Um, she doesn't have a very exciting life. Um, both her parents are physicists, so the dinner time conversations are not very interesting. Her mother seems to say nothing will remain secure. So um, she doesn't look forward to any inheritance, okay? So the question is why, right? Why are we sort of worried about our future? I'll take another example. So what do you think this is? This is a pile of clothes, right? And it's not very neat. So I would say, you know, half the audience here is good at making this happen at home. A little bit of a gender situation, right? Like the half which does this. And then there's the other half, which uh, is sometimes forced to make this happen, sometimes we are good at it, just the superior gender and all that. So now comes the point, what is it that I'm trying to tell you with these two situations here? Yeah. So the thing on the left, what did we sort of surmise? It's easy. You just throw it, it's easy. On the right, it's not, because it takes you a lot of time to actually build to this and to get to that situation. So the two situations are sort of reverse of each other, but they're not in terms of how much time it takes. And so that is what we mean by the hardness of a problem, okay? So the hardness of a problem is basically proportional to how much time it takes to solve the problem. So the left-hand side is an easy problem, right-hand side is a hard problem, and so this is an example of an everyday problem that is not equally hard both ways. You can go from one to the other, but not in the same time. So now why am I saying this? I'm saying this because our current security, you know, the security of our money in the bank, the defense, what have you, it's based on mathematical hardness of problems. So we are saying certain problems are hard, and that is why everything is secure. Okay, and so now comes this point that computational resources, you know, they, they do grow very fast. So today's hard problem may not remain hard tomorrow. So we can have a quantum computer, which is very exciting, or we can have a classical break also to a problem. So the hardness does not remain hard all the time because there's no theorem for it. There is no proof that, okay, this will remain hard forever. So what happens then? So if this gets broken, then we are looking at what? We're looking at a catastrophe. So how do we prevent that? And of course, that's the job to tell you that there's a solution to this problem. And that, of course, comes from what? Quantum, right? That is the theme for today. So the problem is that my security should be independent of future advancements in technology. I should not have to worry about whether my daughter will inherit anything, neither should Ed, right? And so this is something which we, should, which we call future secure. And so the solution is what is called quantum communications. So quantum communications is an area where what we are doing is a paradigm change. So instead of using the mathematical hardness of a problem, we are using laws of quantum mechanics, and that is laws of nature, to keep things secure. And so you can't just break laws of nature. So this is a way in which quantum is providing you a solution to an otherwise catastrophic scenario, right? So catastrophe seems to be something that I've chosen as a theme, so we go on to another one. And this, uh, you know, beautiful draw, you know, picture was done by a local artist here. Okay, but the picture is beautiful, but what it sort of conveys is not. What are we seeing here on screen? We're seeing, you know, a little girl who's not very happy with whatever is going on. We see a world which does not quite have any trees. All the fish are dead in the ocean. So what am I looking at here? I'm looking at what we may be creating 
because of all the pollution that we are throwing into the environment, right? So we have all this carbon in the atmosphere. We have all these pollutants in the ocean. And that is because of the industrialization that we are doing, which is great. But we are also doing this in an indiscriminate way, right? So we are not really thinking. And so if we don't think, then this could be a future world if we don't take action now. And this is a very bleak future that we are looking at. And so, of course, again, as you would expect, the solution could come from quantum. Okay? And here we have another area, which is called quantum computing. So quantum computing is something maybe some of you have heard of. So it's essentially a computing technology by which you can solve a certain class of problems much faster than their classical counterparts. What you can do using a quantum computer is simulate new materials. Okay? So you simulate new materials, and these materials are then able to absorb the carbon from the atmosphere. They're able to absorb the pollutants from the ocean. And this is the kind of thing which is actually happening right now. These simulations are real. They are happening. And if we do this right, we will create these materials and prevent the world from ending. I mean, so that's the kind of catastrophe here we are highlighting, right? But I don't want to end on a note <laughs> of catastrophe. I mean, you know, it gets a little bit too much, right? So what I would like to say is, when you talk about materials, one industry which comes to mind, given that we are sort of here in Alberta, right, is the oil and natural gas industry. As we all know, this is the state which is leading in that domain. And so we are, I think, all of us in this industry, we are interested in new materials. So that's one thing. But what else interests us? Let's see. We want to detect new oil reserves, maybe. We want to have, you know, better detection and location of gas leaks, maybe, right? And so these are things which we are doing. But imagine doing this using quantum technology. We have something called quantum sensing. So what is a quantum sensing? It's as the word says. We are able to have more precise sensing abilities. So suppose you felt that there was no oil here. By using a quantum sensor, you can actually know the presence of oil. So you're able to have high precision sensing for all these things which otherwise go, would go unnoticed, okay? As someone said you know, before me, that an MRI is also something which is an example of quantum sensing. So we are sensing the magnetic field. We'll have portable machines based on quantum technology, which will make medical imaging better. So this is kind of the you know, overall picture we have here. So <laughs> the seven minutes that I had, I do hope that you know, I've made some kind of an impact that you know, quantum is fine, it's mysterious, but it's not just some, something out there. There are lots, all these possibilities which are happening now. Right? So quantum is present day technology. However, what is also important to note is that quantum will also create our tomorrow. So it's not just about you know, what is happening at present. We are doing many things, but there are many possibilities which are going to emerge which we can't even think of right now. So it's wonderful that we are actually beginning this series of events, right, which um, Ed has started on creating tomorrow uh, with quantum, because there's, I think, nothing better uh, to start off, to kick off this event than using quantum as an example of something which will create our tomorrow. So if there are students here in the audience, I would say, come and work with us in quantum, because we really need more people with us. Uh, if there are people here who are just curious, you know, interested, you want to engage, come engage with us in quantum. But of course, one thing I would like to, you know, the group I would really like to appeal to is people who have some money, maybe, right? Uh, <laughs> if there are some such people here, if you're looking for something that you want to invest in, which is future technology, then of course there is nothing better than quantum. Sorry about the people who don't work in quantum here, but I would definitely say that quantum is the thing to invest in, so kindly do invest in quantum, because I think quantum is going to sort of, you know, create our tomorrow. Thank you.